So now we're following up on the transition from main sequence to red giants in stellar evolution. And in this video, we'll just describe what happens to low mass stars after the red giant stage. Low mass stars we're going to define to be stars that begin their lives with less than eight times the mass of the sun. So eight solar masses or less. High mass stars suffer a different fate than low mass stars. High mass stars ha begin their lives with more than eight solar masses. So a low mass star, when the core runs out of fuel in the main sequence stage, it has turned all of its core hydrogen into helium. And during the red giant stage, that helium core collapses, a shell around the core uh, is generating hydrogen fusion, and that expands the outer layers into the red giant uh, star. And so we talked about this in a previous video. Uh, just to remind you, you could go back to that video and look at what happens in the inside of a star uh, when, as it becomes a red giant and into what we think of as a regular red giant, which is fusing helium in its core. And so a low mass star does this. Eventually, after it's expanded into a red giant, its core will collapse down into a helium fusing core. That helium is fusing into carbon and oxygen. And when the carbon and oxygen have all been produced in the core, and you, you're completely carbon and oxygen and no helium, then for a low mass star, it won't be able to fuse anything uh, more than that. Uh, gravity will not be able to crush down the carbon and oxygen uh, to a dense and hot enough state in order to get nuclear reactions to occur. So for a low mass star, this is the end of the road, and that will be the end of the red giant phase for a low mass star. So when the core runs out of fuel and shell fusion has taken over, the uh, energy generation that's happening in the shell outside of the now carbon oxygen core is generating so much pressure that the outer layers get explosively pushed off of the core and into space. This creates, to an observer on the outside of the star, what we call a planetary nebula. And so that is the life of a low mass star. You go from an interstellar cloud of gas and dust to a low mass main sequence star spending 90% of its life turning hydrogen into helium, and then the remaining 10% of its life is expanding into and becoming a red giant star. At the end of the red giant star's phase, uh, uh, lifetime phase, a low mass star will have a carbon oxygen core, which will not be able to fuse, and the shell layers outside of that core will generate so much outward gas pressure that they push those outer layers into space becoming a planetary nebula. Let me show you what a planetary nebula looks like. This is a planetary nebula that uh, has outer layers which have been pushed into into space. The core is actually revealed at this point and I'm going to point at it with my cursor. So here is that hot carbon oxygen core and the outer layers of gas have been pushed out. Here's another planetary nebula. This is a real photograph. What we're seeing are outer layers which have been pushed out into space away from whatever the core is. Here's another one. This we're looking at in kind of a wide field view. We can see a uh, uh, local stars within the Milky Way and far in the background, far away from even our own Milky Way galaxies, another galaxy in this image. Just pointing that out. Here's another planetary nebula. And here's another one. We can see the carbon oxygen core revealed in the center and material, some of which is somewhat clumpy and glowing, is uh, uh, expelled out. So this Leftover core, the burned out core of a low mass star, is what becomes a red giant object. The planetary, planetary nebula disperses, revealing this carbon oxygen core. This core is 
crushed down by gravity. And the electrons in the carbon and oxygen atoms are compressed so tightly together that they're able to exert a quantum mechanical pressure on each other, and that resists any further crushing by gravity. And so this carbon-oxygen core, which we call a white dwarf, is being held up by the pressure of these electrons in their uh, various energy shells. <clears throat> so a white dwarf has a mass which has a maximum mass of about 1.4 solar masses. And so a white dwarf can't be any more massive than 1.4 solar masses. If it is, then gravity will crush the material down even further. And the approximate size of a white dwarf is about the size of Earth. But it has an extremely high density. And so if you were to take a cubic centimeter, like a sugar cube, of material from a white dwarf, it would weigh several tons. So we have this uh, image again of a planetary nebula, and just to point out where the white dwarf is. Remember, the white dwarf is this carbon-oxygen core. It is so small, it's about the size of the Earth, but it's bright enough that we might be able to see it with some telescopes. And so there you have it, the life of a low-mass star going from interstellar cloud of gas and dust to main sequence star to red giant planetary nebula which leaves behind a white dwarf. But wait, there's more. What happens if the white dwarf has a companion? Well, other things will occur. If it's isolated, a star uh, will just leave behind that core and nothing will occur. It'll radiate out its heat. Uh, over a long period of time and become an object that's called a black dwarf. So do they just sit there? Yes, unless they have a companion. And so here's an example of a white dwarf with a companion star, Sirius A and Sirius B. What happens in a companion system like this? A white dwarf that's in a uh, binary system with a companion has extremely high gravity at its surface. And that gravity can actually pull material off of its companion star, particularly if they are close together. And so the image that I'm showing in this slide uh, is a depiction of material being siphoned off and then spiraling inward into ever decreasing orbit orbits onto the surface of the white dwarf star. As that material, which is mainly hydrogen gas, is uh, pulled onto the surface of the white dwarf in a process called accretion, the white dwarf gains mass, and uh, this material gets hotter, it might expel uh, uh, more radiation, but as the white dwarf gets more massive and hotter at its surface, it might ignite that hydrogen material in a nuclear fusion process. If that occurs, you can have an event that's called a nova. It's where the material that's on the surface of the white dwarf gets so hot that fusion occurs. It's a runaway fusion explosion. So it's not sustained like the fusion that happens inside of a main sequence star. This expels a lot of energy at once. And if you're on the outside looking in, it looks like a very bright explosion. And so that's what a nova is. Compared to other explosions that occur in space, a nova is relatively gentle. Also, when a nova explosion occurs, it doesn't destroy the white dwarf or the companion, and so this process could repeat itself. A white dwarf that's in a companion system that has a nova occurs, uh, a nova occurring, could have a, another nova occur, and this could repeat itself uh, multiple times. However, if a white dwarf accretes too much matter, it might cause an explosion to occur that is larger than a nova. In this case, you could have so much mass that is uh, stolen from the companion star that a uh, even more energetic explosion occurs, and this is called a supernova. A supernova is a tremendous explosion that destroys the remnant and the companion star and doesn't leave anything behind. 
And so on this slide, I've got the complete schematic of what happens to low mass stars. We've already described the life from protostar all the way to white dwarf. And now on the bottom, we have what could happen if the white dwarf has a companion. And so if it has a companion, it can pull material off of that companion. There's two things that might occur at that point. Either you could have a nova, which leaves behind the white dwarf and might repeat itself, or you can have a white dwarf supernova, what astronomers call a type 1a supernova event, and that leaves nothing behind. But you might be wondering, what happens to our sun? Well, our sun doesn't have a companion star. And so, because it's a low mass star, it has only one solar mass, which is less than eight solar masses, it will become a white dwarf at the end of its red giant lifetime. And it will steadily cool to become a black dwarf. That's the fate of our sun after about five billion years from today.